as we are approaching the end of the year, it's time for award season, I guess. So the Game Awards is upon us. It's like this really um, big award ceremony that uh, Jeff Keighley hosts every year. And they've um, uploaded their list of nominees. And I thought, well, it might be fun to just um, look at the choices and cast our own votes. So, yeah, there are 30 categories. I'm going uh, through them in backwards order. So that Game of the Year comes last because I think that's the most interesting one. And I will uh, look at all the choices. And if I have an opinion on uh, one, I will tell you why I choose it. Um, but there's also going to be categories where I really don't have any opinions at all. Like the one we see right in front of us, the best esports team. To be honest, um, I'm just going to randomly pick one and skip over it really quick. So yeah, let's get right into it, shall we? So for best esports team, as I said, I don't really know any of these teams, to be honest. Like I don't follow League of Legends that much. I don't follow Dota or Overwatch or Call of Duty. If there was like a StarCraft 2 team, I might be, uh able to to um, pitch in here but yeah so i'm just going to randomly pick and things uh things from the games that are listed here i like um overwatch the most i'm just going to be voting for san francisco shock so yeah um best esports host um let's see if we can actually know any one of these guys um, Alex Machine Richardson, not heard of him. James Dash Patterson, nope. Socks. Um, I think I've, I've seen her. Might have been. So yeah, I don't know any of these, so I will just go with the one I think, uh, hmm, looks the nicest. And, um, I'm actually torn between him or her, so let's go ladies first. And go to the next category. So best esports game. These are of course all wrong. Um, Starcraft 2 is and will always be the best esports game. Uh, so I have to go by a game that I've actually played this year. So I would have to go between Call of Duty, Modern Warfare and Valorant. Um, and since it specifically says Modern Warfare and not Warfront. I would assume they mean like the normal uh, 5 on 5 multiplayer in Call of Duty, which I couldn't care less about, so I'm going to vote for Valorant. Now, Valorant is actually a pretty uh, exciting game. Uh, I haven't played it in a while, but I will surely look into it uh, again at some point. But I think uh, the way they managed to uh, capture that Counter-Strike uh, feeling and combine it with like a little bit of an Overwatch vibe... Um, it's really fun. The free-to-play model, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of. Like, Riot Games free-to-play model, I've never been the biggest fan of. But, you know, it is what it is. It is free, so it's uh, hard to argue about it. Alright, next category. Best esports event. Again, no StarCraft events. So, I'm going to... Hmm, let's see. Now, worlds are usually pretty cool. These, like, I, I'm not a real big fan of League of Legends, but I like how they... Um, how they put on a show during the event. So I'm probably going to go with League of Legends here. Um, I really like the music they do for all their like uh, events. Best esports coach. <sighs> Holy shit. Is there anyone I even remotely know? Not at all. They are all... What is OWL? Is this Overwatch League? Um, yeah, I'm just going to... I don't know. Um... Who could be good at? Who looks like he's good? Good esports coach. Now I'm not going to be uh, going to into stereotypes and pick an Asian guy here, just because you know they're usually good at esports. Um, he might be. These are really weird things to vote on for game awards, but it feels like they've run out of uh, good categories, so they chunk in all this uh, esports stuff. So, best esports athlete, Showmaker, Canyon, Shotty, Saewoo, uh, League of Legends, Call of Duty. I'm going to go with a CSGO guy because CSGO usually pretty good. Bless you. Sorry, I just sneezed there for a moment. All right, next one. Best debut game. Now we get into the interesting stuff. So, um, I haven't played any of these. But I've watched a bunch of Phasmophobia. 
and I really like this game. I really want to play it, but since I don't have any friends to play it with, uh, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So, yeah, maybe I will someday get to play it. It's a really cool idea, and I'm uh, really interested to see what is going to happen. Now, content creator of the year. I'm going to go with my girl, Alana Pierce. That's just, like, I don't care about any of these. I really don't like Valkyrie. <laughs> so, yeah. Alana, it's going to be. All right. Um, and just if you're curious, just just watch her cool, uh, content. She's 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 a cool girl. Um. All right. Best multiplayer. Now this easily has to go to. Well, let me think a moment. Now Among Us, theoretically, is like has like the the best uh moments like of any game this year, right? Uh, Fall Guys was fun, and Valorant. Actually, I played the most. Um, you know, the problem with Among Us is that you actually have to play with like eight people that ideally you know to get the most out of it. Which again, um, since I don't have a lot of people to play with, that's not what I do very often. I've played with some random guys on Discord, which was... Um, it can be hit or miss. It was also right. So I'm probably going to uh, actually go with Valorant because... It's like the game that I played the most, and I'm usually more of a competitive guy, but um, to be honest, each of these four games here, I don't play Animal Crossing, so I can't really talk about that, but each of these four games is like a really good experience, but I'm going with Valorant here. Best sports slash racing. Um, this can only be F1 2020 for me, because first of all, it's the only game I, uh, I really played, then I am generally not that much into general sports games, um, Tony Hawk is just a, a remaster slash remake, so I don't know. Now this this is a series, right? Some people could be, oh, it's always the same game, but the F1 series has really picked up in the last few years, and I'm really a big fan of um, of the sport. So yeah, that's my bias. Best sim slash strategy against StarCraft 2 not here, but I think they are going for new games. So let's have a look. Crusader Kings 3. Is actually one of the few paradox games that I've actually played, and I get why people like it a lot. It's it's quite amazing. The this kind of stuff you can can do with it is uh is pretty unique, and it it really adds a uh, a really great twist to like the the whole um uh paradox strategy uh genre if it's like an actual genre. And um, the cool thing about it is that it's actually one of the more accessible games from them. So I, I really had a good time playing it. Now, Desperados 3, I personally never played, but I have a soft spot for that game. The reason is because these kind of games, um, I really used to love, like, uh, the original Desperados was one of the games I played when I went to school. Um, there were games like the, the original Commandos games, and yeah, I really want those games to be successful. Now... That being said, since I haven't played Desperado 3 or any of the other games except for uh, the installation screen of Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'm going to go with Crusader Kings. And I think it's a very good choice. Best family. Now, it's only not my family. I can tell you that. So, what's, what's, uh, what's our choices here? We have Fall Guys. Uh, for the best game appropriate for family play. So, that's, that's the idea behind it. So let's see, is Fall Guys a good game to play with family? Well, it would be if it had like co a local core, but I don't think it has. So it's like a multiplayer family game. Yeah, I can get behind that. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Um, I've seen a, a bunch of screenshots of the game, but I've never played it. Minecraft Dungeons, I really don't care much about. Paper Mario is probably very good. Mm, I think like a game like Fall Guys is, is the kind of game I would play with my family if I were to play with my family. Because um, I like pissing off other people, and Fall Guys is a great game to like infuriate other guys. So that's definitely uh, in for me. Now, best fighting. Let's see. We have Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. I have never even heard of this game before. Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate is actually one of the few fighting games I actually consider getting. So I might actually get this at some point. Street Fighter V is more of the same, so no One Punch Man. I don't really know about that. And Undernight in Birth. Actually, what the f <clears throat> What? 
what kind of game name is that? Undernight Inbirth Axie Late CL R. French Bread Arc System. Well, I'm going to go with Model Combat, of course. Never, never can go wrong with Model Combat. At least the last installments of this game have been great. Best Role Playing Final Fantasy VII Remake Genshin Impact Persona Persona Five. Oh man, I can't even read. Persona Five Royal Wasteland Three Yakuza. Um, so this is a very simple choice for me. It's Final Fantasy VII because it's the only game I played. Now, personally, I felt uh, the game was a little bit of a letdown because it was so very short. Um, and for me, that really disqualifies it as a, like a a real Final Fantasy game. Um, now, think of it what you will. But I personally remember playing um, Final Fantasy games for like 90 hours or so um, before finishing them. And then through this uh, remake, which is like, it's like not even the first disc of the original game, I believe. It was like a three CD-ROM game on PlayStation. Um, it took about, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 hours for me to finish it. Um, yeah, also, I'm not that keen on the way Square Enix has gone with Final Fantasy as a series as a whole. Like the whole... Um, real-time combat and stuff. I, I'm not sure if I'm keen on that. The dialogue sometimes is very cringy, but that being said, Tifa and Aerith are pretty hot, so... Yeah, I can definitely uh, defend that vote, especially given the fact that I haven't played any of the other games. Um, my runner up here would probably be Wasteland 3, because I find it kind of um, interesting. Um, then maybe Yakuza, because Genshin Impact and Persona 5 like, um, Persona 5 is probably, I think it's probably going to even win this category, maybe, uh, tied up with Final Fantasy, because it, it has, like, all these great reviews, but I'm not sure, I can't really get behind the visual side of that game, but maybe I should give it a try one, one day. Best Action Adventure. Ooh, now this is, uh, ooh, ooh. Now... Having a game like Ori and the Will of the Wisps in a category with the likes of Assassin's Creed and Star Wars that I Fallen Order feels kind of comical to me. Like, these games are so different. Holy balls, they are so freaking different. Hmm. Now, let's see. Which games have I actually played? I have played Assassin's Creed Valhalla for like a couple of hours. I have played Fallen Order for a couple of hours. And I've played Ori for a couple of hours. Now, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to love Miles Morales when I ever get to play it. Now, I want to wait till I actually get a PS5 in a couple of months to play it. Um, But I'm pretty sure that I'm going to love it. Now, The Last of Us, I think, is like the most overrated game series of all times. I really don't like these games at all. And Ghost of Tsushima um, might be a great game. It just it just doesn't do anything for me. There's like, from watching the first trailers, it never really um, motivated me to even consider playing it. I might actually end up playing it uh, at some point. But yeah, so it would be between Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Marvel Spider-Man. And now call me a hypocrite, but I'm probably going for Spider-Man. Now, let me give you my uh, my logic on this now. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, I really didn't enjoy that much the bits that I've played of it. I'm actually currently trying to get into it again to give it like a second chance. But I'm really not into the Souls-like style. And I don't know, I really didn't like the characters that I saw. And um, with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it was a little bit of the same. Like, I don't feel like... Um, the di- it's a little bit like with Final Fantasy, right? The direction Assassin's Creed has moved into from, like, the original Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed 2 from being, like, a really game about being Assassin. And now you are, like... You have, like, these open-world role-playing games, which are, like, kind of cool. But then they've forced this whole Assassin versus Templars and then, like, the the current day Animus uh, stuff into the stories. I, I'm i really not very keen on that. Plus, the Viking scenario really does resonate with me as well. So, long story short, I'm going to uh, vote with Miles Morales because everything I've seen from the game and knowing um, how good the original game was um, really vibed with me. 
So next category is best action. Now, let's make the sure this is Hades. Um, the reason is because, first of all, I haven't played any of the other games. Um, also, the other, only two games I would be mildly interested in are Doom Eternal, which I own, but I haven't played yet. Um, and the reason I don't think it would win this category is because I d didn't really um, get into the groove with the original Doom 2016. So this is like um, a mild um, warning sign for me, I guess. And Half-Life Alex, I think while it's pretty cool, um, given like that it's a VR game, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of VR. Let's, uh, uh, let's be real. Uh, Hades, on the other hand, is like one of the best games of the year. It's like a beautiful looking game, but it's like the definition of a great action game. That's like, well, what was that? Constant action uh, over and over. There's a great soundtrack. I love roguelike. So yeah, that's an easy choice for me. Innovation and accessibility. I don't know shit about that stuff. But I have seen some uh, some good options uh, to customization in the menus of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So that's why I'm just going to click this. But I don't really know much about this. Best VR, AR. Now, I've actually played the Iron Man game uh, at my brother's. He has like PlayStation VR. And it was quite cool. But I feel like um, Half-Life Alex is probably the cooler experience. Um, I'm actually always have wanted to try star wars quadrants in vr i have this game i've played it for a couple of hours and i'm probably going to try it at some point but for now i'm going to vote half-life alex just because i want to give half-life as much praise as it gets where it, where it somehow deserves it so we can get more half-life games hopefully best community support who um hmm for well, that you would have actually be a member of the community, am I right? So how do we vote on this? So it's not going to be Destiny 2 because I just don't like Destiny. Um, Fall Guys, I don't know about that. It's just uh, more of the same. Valorant, it's like uh, dumb free to play somehow. So I'm going to go with Apex Legends, which is which is it's it's a game I've been playing recently uh, quite a bit. And I really like um, the way they approach um, approach free to play, and uh, the new map is really cool. So yeah, Apex Legends it is, and it's quite a lot of categories. Best mobile game. There's no such thing as a good mobile game. Um, I guess card games work quite good on. Uh, on mobile, so Legends of Rune Terror, which I've played like three matches or so of on a computer, though. Best indie, um, yeah, that's Hades. Like talked about Hades in the best action game category, but yeah, it's it's a really great game. I'm not going to take away from any of the other games, especially Fall Guys has been um, a phenomenal success, but um, I think the overall quality, visually, um. Audio, gameplay, um, the story is a little bit weird. Uh, I must admit, I'm not a big fan of the stories of Haiti, Hades, but yeah, it's probably one of the games I played the most recently. So Hades is a good choice, I feel like. Best ongoing, um, Apex Legends, just for the same reason. Right, Warzone could be a contender. Warzone, I also like very much. To be honest, No Man's Sky, if I would actually play it, I might uh, maybe uh, go into that direction a little bit more. I'm really amazed about what they have done with that game from the shit show it was when it launched to now being like a very high regarded game. Um, I really respect that. So a vote for that game would be totally understandable as well. But I'm going to uh, go with the game I've actually played. So Apex Legends it is. <coughs> games for impact um i don't know any of these to be honest for a thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or message pro social what does this even mean i have no idea um 
Yeah, I'm just going to randomly vote for Tell Me Why because I think I've also seen a trailer or so which I liked. But uh, it doesn't really mean anything. Best performance. Um, Logan Cunningham as Hades. Najee Jeta as Miles Morales. Laura Bailey as Abby, The Last of Us Part 2. The Last of Us Part 2. Ooh. Now for performance. Now I don't I like the voice acting in Hades is great, but it, the the performance as a whole package, um, I feel like comes a little bit short in this kind of game because it's just mostly um text bubbles with audio, right? So a game like The Last of Us or even Ghost of Tsushima or Miles Morales just has an edge. In that case, because you can actually see the characters and with motion capture and stuff, you can get like a really great performance. That being said, um, fuck The Last of Us. I really like what I've seen from Miles Morales. So I'm going with it just uh, to spite The Last of Us. I really hate this game. Um, Best audio design. Well, again, I've played none of these games, which is... Uh, mind blowing for some of you guys but uh i guess i'm just not that of a mainstream gamer these days um but i like the music of, of doom so let's just go with uh with doom eternal so best score and music now this is a hard one i'm really a big music guy i really think music is important and music is like a very big part of a great gaming experience for me now doom eternal while it has a great soundtrack, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a metalhead, I, I get behind it. I feel like it's it's more um, of like, I don't know, it helps push the uh, over-the-top narrative of that game, right? The whole um, everything dialed up to 11, right? But it doesn't really affect me emotionally playing this game. It, it, get, it gets you pumping, um, and it gets your know, adrenaline, adrenaline running, but that's not what I'm usually looking for in a good game soundtrack. That being said, uh, the Final Fantasy remake soundtrack is not great. Um, I don't think it's 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 very outs outstanding at all. Um, then we have like uh, Hades, which has like phenomenal music, and we have. Um, the thing that touches my heart every time I hear it. It's like one of the few soundtracks that I hear, even um, when I'm not playing games. It's the Ori soundtrack. Now, um, as I said, I haven't played a lot of The Will of the Wisp, but I really loved uh, Ori and the Blind Forest soundtrack, and I also really love what I've heard so far from Ori and the Will of the Wisp, so I'm going with uh, Gareth Coker here. And again, fuck The Last of Us. Best Art Direction... Oh, that's hard, but I think I'm going with Hades in this one. Now, Ori, um, while it still looks freaking beautiful, it looks <clears throat> too much like the first game. It's it's the curse of a sequel. It's beautiful, but it does what it did good in the first game just a little bit better. But um, having seen it the first time in, uh, in the Blind Forest, it just was more impactful to me. So watching uh, Hades... Um, seeing it for the first time just was like that impression that uh, Ori and the Blind Forest left for me when it came out just this year. So I'm going with Hades. Um, Final Fantasy Remake. Um, while it 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 looked good, it's a good looking game. Don't get me wrong, but the whole um generic uh JRPG art style that Square Enix has moved into, where all these guys look like I don't know. Uh, it's, it's not mine. It's really not mine. Best narrative. So, let's see. The Final Fantasy, why is this even here? Did we have so bad games this year? I, I don't think that the story of Final Fantasy VII was that great, to be honest. Um, and I... Funnily enough, I still would have to go with with Final Fantasy VII, because the story of Hades wasn't that great. I've not played any of the other three games. So, yeah, let's just go with it. Fuck it. Best game direction. 
awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Um, innovation and vision. I might give this to a Half-Life Alex to be honest. Like making a VR game that is like a fully featured triple A title is um very visionary and they had to innovate a lot in this game. So um I feel comfortable giving this to Half-Life Alex. Game of the year. <sighs> I guess Hades then. If I have to choose from these games, I'm not really sure if I would have preferred any other game. I would have to think back what else did we play in 2020, to be honest. I'm not sure. But yeah, since we only have these six choices, let's go with Hades. I think it's uh it's it's pretty much uh a clear choice here. Now as I said, Final Fantasy VII, I've played it. It's one of the few games I've actually finished this year because I'm just a big Final Fantasy VII fan, right? Like everybody who played the original game. Um, and just to to get this clear, I've never actually finished the original game. So I was really looking forward to playing this remake because I want to experience the whole story. I really like Final Fantasy VII. I love the movie, The Adventure Children. Um, I was actually quite looking forward um, in the end, while I thoroughly enjoyed playing it, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game. It just it just didn't uh, live up to the expectations and it just was too short for me. So with Hades, it really um, exceeded all my expectations. Now it has its problems, especially the weird story, um, which I didn't like particularly. But in the end, like the, the whole package of all these games... Given that I haven't played Doom Eternal and Ghost of Tsushima yet, Animal Crossing I'm never going to play and fuck The Last of Us. So I'll have to go with uh, with Hades here. Now, I'm already seeing the comments. Uh, these are some controversial um, choices that I've made. And I totally get if you uh, don't agree with them. Just make sure to stay civil in the comments. I'm looking forward to reading all of them. Um, I hope we can finally get 2020 behind us. It's only one and a half month left. So we're almost there. So let's get into a probably even worse 2021. All right. I see you guys. Bye bye.